Hello guys, yes, welcome to today's video. We did the one all about Season C1 and that had pretty good feedback I've seen from all the comments in-game, out-of-game, Discord, you name it. And it showcased the talents, the policies, a little bit of the extra gameplay added with, you know, the, the events and the map. But today, we're going to be talking about the policies more in depth because this honestly needed a video on its own. And I'm going to talk about some good things about it. I'm obviously going to give you guys some advice in my, in my eyes on which way you should go. But at the same time, I've got a problem. And let's discuss that issue in Call of Dragons policies. Hello guys, yes, smash a like, comment, and subscribe for more daily videos of me, Mr. Sneaking and official Call of Dragons content creator, you know the one and only. We've been here since server four, day one, grinding over 400 plus days, and we are here in season T1, and I'm breaking down the new policies, right? And the thing I'm going to just start out with saying, and it will make more sense as we go through, was one of the very, very, very old objectives of the old policy trees and that was down to basically them having pvp talents based in these trees and they saw and and the feedback given back during that time was players didn't enjoy it they didn't enjoy how policies was giving players a edge right an edge in pvp gameplay so what they did, as you guys know, as the past seasons have been going, they found ways of making that season add in like, you know, the, the turrets, which are really cool, or, you know, barricades and like ways of getting better healing or, you know, increasing your XP getting um, from the, the, you know, just dark lanes, just all stuff that you need generally in a season, which wasn't impacting the pvp experience because it was all down to obviously the activity of the player the more active the player the better the policies were because they would have been obviously actively killing right but when we look at this new tree i'm getting scared because for some reason i blinked and i thought i was playing rise of kingdoms and this was almost the crystal tech tree it was crazy because at first it starts off pretty cool um with a hint as you can see here a little hint at the bottom of what is to come so you can get target tactics which we all know this is peacekeeping damage war studies which is your xp and spread the world which is prestige gained these two are obviously going to be some that you're going to need to grab early on especially the prestige gained this encompassed with the talents as you can imagine is going to allow you to get really really fast prestige allowing you to get through all of this as quick as you can and that's going to be the key for spenders in the policy because this is kind of i'm not gonna lie this is the, the the season for spending if you're a if you're a spender in policy tree because it's crazy right at the bottom you're gonna get wellspring and wellspring's a cool one it's gonna let you have a stamina limit bonus but again this is going to be really quickly maxed everyone's gonna have this right and it's not gonna be too much of a an issue right you can imagine everything in this green section is going to be maxed out for most players like no matter what free to play spender you name it you're all going to have it but now when we start going down into the trees when we start going deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole where it gets scarier and scarier where you start to see more and more it seems paid like i would say pvp element based talents which is everything we didn't want so one thing you will see is straight away the medical stuff that we discussed and the medical ones are kind of good because again it's going to allow players to fight more often which people want to do they kind of want to fight more often but you'll notice in this when we go through it the resource healing and even the reductions coming to resource healing further down the line is so insane that so far from what i've heard and what i've been discussing with other players the, the verdict is resource healing is going to be one of the scariest ways to go because especially for a t5 player that has insanely high resources anyway because they can just buy those resources right they're going to be able to get access later on 
to some insanely fast big heals all the time. So the way they do this is when they go into the next areas. So you've got your apothecary upgrade, which is your elixir capacity limit, which is really good. Or you can go for production speed. This again is going to be determined, if I'm honest with you guys, with your villagers. Because you can get elixir production and elixir capacity. So if you honestly can get a ton of production then you know which one you're going to go for, right? It's kind of simple. You can just keep getting more production and just keep boosting it up if you're active or if you want more big, you know, just like 100k, 200k, big insane elixir healing, you know, standards, then you're going to go for the, the limit increase, right? But when we go further in now, this is when, again, like I said, it's, it's getting scary for me because for a free-to-play player, I'm looking at this as well as, if I'm looking at this as a free-to-play player, I'm looking at this as like, okay, I can heal a little bit better here. But when we go into the next one, we gain stockpile days. So this increases the amount of healing your herbalist hut stores from previous days. So this is basically 0.1% and this is going to go increased by 10, right? Um, well, I should say by 15. So this is going to go to a 1.5, I believe, day stockpile. So obviously you can keep holding more, maybe potentially like 600k, 700k in resource healing, then on top of your day. So you've got nearly a million troops worth of resource healing. Can you see where I'm kind of going with this? I'm not, I might be really bad explaining it, but you can see the amount of healing you are able to save. And that for a T5 player is very powerful again. So I, I don't know what this is going to do because again, even if you didn't want this and you thought, do you know what? This doesn't sound that good. Guess what? You can increase your daily resource healing anyway percentage of your total legion. So you can just increase the amount of total legion you're going to be healing through your daily resource healing base anyway. So you can just keep getting more and more healing. And this is where it gets scary for me because it seems like the game is leaning more into resource healing compared to free healing, which is again what Call of Dragons was selling. It was selling how good and great the combat is with free healing. But we're seeing more and more and more nerfs, nerfs, nerfs to elixir healing but more buffs to resource healing to encourage resource selling maybe um to, like to buy resources so you can obviously use resources to heal troops more often in a very similar style to uh, rise of kingdoms right and that's just here we're only in the blue section you can see this nice little area again is to do with your turrets and i did hint about this in the the video prior to this and obviously you're going to get some nice little cool um stats here however in the bottom one the thing that i think you guys need to take is honestly resource seizure it sounds crazy i know but the fact that you're going to increase get more resources gained by destroying enemy turrets is great but the more important thing is you're gaining 3% Legion March speed on this. And this might increase per trigger. So this could be 3%, 6%, 9%. 5, like, I don't even want to know how high this is going up. This must be some sort of bug in Shuler that this is how, how much you're gaining. So I don't know, again, how strong this is. This is, again, the, the day one of the T1 policy. So you can see here it's sketchy on how much march speed you can technically add to your march which is a pvp based stat man the more march speed you have the more you can get into combat the more you can get out of combat the easier you can basically start um, cycling your rage because you're going to be in combat faster and if someone's targeting you can just run away like, it's insane guys it's insane stop it it needs to stop and we've not even got to the bit where, where I've been hiding it all this time. You've got at the end, even though we've got all of that healing reduction on top, we can reduce the resource healing even further. Don't worry about elixir healing, guys. They don't care. It's all about resource healing this season. Mana healing reduction, ore healing reduction, wood healing reduction, and gold healing reduction. Like You can choose one of these, I believe, and then you're going through you know, on the, on the next tree. Which again, kind of insane. The amount of healing reduction 
for resource healing that you're able to get, the amount of even just capacity to resource heal, even the ability to stockpile and reserve resource heal is just obscenely high. But the love and attention to the original thing of the game, which was elixir healing, has not really been touched on. And I think that is, again, a big issue in the policy tree. And when we go finally into the, the PvP side of things, and again, on top of more healing reduction, by the way, um, I just don't know what to say. You know what I mean? We, 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 we had all of this before. We had infantry drills, cavalry drills, marksman drills, and magic drills, and everyone disliked it. Because this is PvP stats based in a policy tree and for most spenders, they will happily go over here and spend 80 gems. Well, I say on 80 gems, but they'll definitely spend 80 gems on this to skip one day, two days, three days, four days, whatever it's going to take just to get an extra percentage of damage dealt compared to other players that are having to wait the timer for these pvp stats and the thing is like a spender will easily get all of these 2020 they'll have the military expansion 2020 and on top of this they also and it some people have already said they don't like cursed swords but for a t5 player this is one of the most insane things again for you guys like i'm just being real with you if you're a t5 player you have the most amount of stats in the game you're only going to be losing against obviously other t5 players but that's kind of the name of the game anyway but when you're going against all the t4 kingdoms guess what you're going to have a five percent more damage dealt bonus on them and on top of at least a 10 percent increased damage dealt with any of your units on top so in total that's a 15 percent more damage dealt output with t5 just 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 sit there and just just listen to what i'm saying to you guys i know they've made it so t4 maybe take a little bit less counter attack damage yes they maybe improve the merits gain from a t4 player hitting a t5 player but they've just given literally t5 players all of the power in the policy tree through damage they've given them all the power as well through all the amount of healing that they're able to stockpile and do i just kind of think this is too much i don't know about you guys i personally think this is too much i love how long the tree is and i kind of would hope maybe you know this here is a resource choice or an elixir choice and then down here is a resource choice or an elixir choice and down here is a resource choice or an elixir choice not resource healing like resource healing and basically resource healing like that's all i'm seeing is resource healing like and it's obscene and and the thing is when we're going into it like even further you've got to think all of this is coming into the game of obviously all of these talents um, or should I say all these um, policy points obviously gives the T5 player more damage but then like we've kind of discussed already you have these new talents and you can imagine now some of these guys that are just not taking damage you know dealing more damage or reducing your rage accumulation speed on top of obviously when we go back in having a 20% stamina recovery speed, having, again, 100k merits per week, and, again, reducing your healing by 10% in your Herbis Hut for resource healing. Not, not elixir healing, guys, but resource healing, you know? So this is what I'm saying. Like, the amount of buffs to resource healing is out of this world. And that's kind of what this video, hopefully... By this 13 minute mark has finally got into you guys heads where honestly i do like and i'm not gonna i'm not trying to bash on the season when you're probably watching this video i love the map i loved honestly the heroes like i like quite a lot of the stuff even the talents i honestly quite like a lot of these talents i think they're very interesting right but the policies is what made the game almost fair and flat to everyone because even for a spender in the olden trees you weren't gaining so much of an advantage as you've ever gained to this day and like i said this to me 
feels now like the actual crystal tent tree from rise of kingdoms you know like i'm able to basically spend if you want to say if i have the money i could spend maybe let's go to my gem output here i could spend maybe 40 pounds to get twelve and a half thousand gems on purpose just to spend on this tech tree while you know just to maximize how fast i get everything gained so when i do go out you know when i do leave my city and i do hit these guys and i attack them and i gain that prestige and i gain you know all of the xp i'm already always always gaining the maximum amount possible so i'm always gonna gain to the end faster than anyone else and i f personally feel that is just a bit unfair you know it's a little bit unfair i think it's a little bit too much but it is what it is right so that's kind of been like my showcase and rant if you want to say it, on the policy tree i am going to give you guys now the what i would recommend so far um what to do basically in your season there is a couple of traps in here early on that I don't want you guys to fall into. So what I want you to do is kind of treat this as if it's like your research tree, similar to like you've done in the past. So what we want to do is obviously enact the, the targeted uh, tactics to make it 1 out of 10. And then we're just going to do the bare minimal. And it sounds a bit crazy, I know, but put 1, 1, 1 and 1 to unlock as far as you can. And then, as soon as you've done this, I'm going to request, it sounds a bit crazy, but get your prestige gained as high and fast as possible with your War Studies second. Because if you can gain more prestige quicker, it's going to allow you basically to trigger all of this and this at the same time. So you're basically making your time more efficient if you chose the war experience you're basically slowing down your progression of the tree right so by doing this actually first it's gonna be one of the biggest things to do so get this out of the way your stamina you won't need to do really really quickly because you gotta think the only thing you're taking early game is villagers which takes 40 stamina so you kind of only want to get this so you can get maybe an extra 20 stamina at the start really really quickly so you can capture three villagers off the bat maybe off one you know legion troop makes it a little bit easier and then once you've done that leave it until you get to pvp time when it's past one going into past two you know what i'm saying then you want to have this maxed out by then so you have stamina to use against players not against random pve content where you don't need it so from here, you're going to just move down your, your tree. Like I said, I would personally go for your actual elixir production for free-to-play players. It sounds a bit crazy, but there's going to be so much resource re reduction in the future. This is one of our only areas we're going to take a bunch of daily elixir production. So grab it. So we're going to grab the, the daily elixir. We have to take this resource healing. And then for your, your turret, you can honestly choose which turret you want. I'm not going to be that guy and tells you which turret's the best. I personally think if you want to be greedy, go for the fire one. <laughs> Why not? Deal the most damage and let everyone else do all their little tasks in hand. But love love to go for fire damage. Why not? But then when we go into the next tree, again, what I would actually go for is your elixir capacity limit. I would try and get your elixir limit as big as possible because it means then when you go to sleep overnight, maybe after a war, you're going to be able to wake up and free heal as much of your troops before having to actually go over and start wasting your resource in the healing, right? Because when you do that, like I say, you will then go down to the bottom tree and you're going to see out of these two and maybe I'm going to give you guys in the future a better build. But I'm not going to lie, I kind of do like just medical progress. It's it, it just it's safer. It's the most consistent one. But if you are someone who kind of wants to prepare and you know you want to fight really, really hard for a long time in one day, maybe medical administration might be the player. It might be the player, guys. I'm not going to tell you this is the best one or this is the best one. Personally, I haven't got that information. I've not played Season T1. No one's played Season T1. So if anyone's trying to tell you this is better than that, we don't know because everyone said 
resource healing was the way to go in season one when we originally played the game everyone was wrong and it's free healing as you guys know and as times adapted obviously the healing meta has changed so who knows what this is going to be right so I would, i'm going to leave that section a little bit more hit and miss go through which whatever you want but when we come into the next area what i would actually go for is actually reduce the damage taken by turrets I think this is going to be a really popular one. I think you taking next to no damage from enemy turrets is going to be a very popular thing in PvP, especially when then you maximize your Legion March speed so you can get in and out of combat, killing those turrets really, really easily and not taking that much damage from it, which is great. And then, as you can see, we're in the resource healing section. So we're going to obviously take more resource healing. And here we get to pick one of the directions, right? Most of the time, mana is the one that obviously takes the most amount, right? But I'm not going to be that guy. I would suggest if you like nine times out of 10 or eight times out of 10, mana healing is probably the safest bet to go here. But... If you're playing maybe archers, maybe you're playing, you know, cavalry, infantry, mages, each one type of those units, if you look, when you go to train them, actually has one thing they really, really like more, apart from infantry being the easiest one. But here you can see we like stone and gold really high. We look at the um, mage one, we've got wood high and stone high here, right? Obviously, mana. If you go over to our um, little elk tree, these guys want a bit of everything, which isn't too bad. So if you're an archer player, you might want to make the gold cost cheaper just to make yourself, you know, train easier on this. Maybe you go on the mage one, right? That's pretty the the, the, the simple <laughs> the simple um, ideology of it, right? When it comes to deciding which resource you want to pick in that one so whatever one you pick is the one you're going to reduce right nine times out of ten like i say i'm going to say mana healing but you might want to pick maybe either the the wood or maybe the gold just to stop you having to do so much and make your life a little bit easier but mana is the big one i can imagine most players are going to go for and then if you're a free to play player sadly what i'm going to suggest is you're going to go one 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 and then if you're a mage player, you're going to obviously try and get this to 10. Then you might get your maximum to 10 afterwards. And then obviously you're going to move forward, right? But you're going to basically unlock these to 1 or whatever the minimal requirements are. So you can get some more Legion expansion first before you go crazy. And you basically work off this now. So whatever this minimal requirement is. So at level 10, if it requires all of these to be 10 out of 20 then you should do that but prioritize your unit first so the magic or the your archers if you're an archer main and then afterwards once you've done all of this section here apart from the warrant you would go down and get more healing and for free to play players i'm going to tell you free to play low spenders avoid this this is going to actually be a little bit more of a double-edged sword to you but for the T5 players, I can imagine this is going to be used all the time. It's going to allow them to just absolutely melt T4 players and get maximum benefit out of it. So we'll soon see. We'll soon see if I'm wrong or right about Cursed Swords and if it's good or not. But honestly, that is how I would go down this tree. Just explained nice and easily. And we've done a breakdown on it. I've showcased it all. I've given you my opinions on it. And there's a quick, nice little tip and build on what you can do for your uh, policies basically so i hope you guys have enjoyed it i know this is season t1 i'm a little bit deflated as you can feel because i'm not too impressed with the policy tree but it's the start of the season and you know what maybe things can change maybe the devs listen to suggestions maybe people you know ask for something different and again like i said maybe the devs listen and change the the policy trees up and any part of the game that's missing messed up right so i hope you guys have enjoyed it this has been today's video smash like comment and subscribe we're at the end it's been an amazing one we're over 5,000 view uh, subs shall say like um since much there since my birthday which has been amazing and we're waiting <laughs> sadly we're waiting for the last couple of days to come and then we are going to be on season t1 
on my main account so keep a lookout for the live stream when we go into t1 we start playing all the way through and i announce or showcase who i'm actually fighting for in the next season so if you enjoyed it smash the like comment and subscribe tell me what you think to the policies guys in the down below if you like them if you don't like them if you agree with what i'm saying or even if you just understand my point of view and you just obviously disagree but you understand where i'm coming from let me know and obviously maybe the devs will listen and maybe change or you know everything will go how it is so <laughs> until then stay safe guys stay sneaky peace out